When you think of the word tabernacle, you think of a tent, right? What if I told you that hidden within the Hebrew word tabernacle are the keys that unlock the mystery of eternal life? The revelation of the mystery of the tabernacle is coming right up. Accompany me as we heed the words of the prophet Jeremiah and the apostle John. Join me as we investigate the sacred pages of the ancient prophetic text we call the Old Testament in search of Messiah. We learned that Mishkan or Tabernacle is spelled Mem Sheen Kof Noon. As a reminder, Mem is the picture of waters, Sheen is the picture of teeth, Kof is the picture of an open palm, and Noon is the picture of a fish. We began our investigation by looking at the first letter, the letter Mem. We asked the question, what does waters, Mem, have to do with the tabernacle? We identified the picture of Mem that most closely matched the conventional context of the Hebrew word Mishkan. The picture we chose was rain coming down from heaven. We learned that the key to unlocking the mystery of the first letter, Mem, or rainwater, was not so much about what the Mishkan or tabernacle is as it is about where it came from. So just like the rain comes down from the heavens, all the intricate plans for building the tabernacle and all its furnishings came down directly from heaven. And who is going to inhabit the tabernacle? It is the Lord God himself who came down from heaven to temporarily dwell in the tabernacle. The next thing we learned is that the first letter of Mishkan, which is Mem, and the last letter of Mishkan, Nun, spell a word. Put the two letters Mem and Nun together and it composes the Hebrew word manna. Manna is the bread that came down from heaven to give life and sustenance to the children of Israel. So we have learned that the tabernacle has something to do with the Lord coming down from heaven and it has to do with life. In our last lesson, we began to explore the mysterious letter Sheen. We discovered that Sheen is the one letter that the Lord revealed as his signature letter. We discovered that the Lord actually etched the signature letter Sheen in order to make the ownership of Jerusalem clear to all the nations of the world and to all men. The Lord himself is the title holder of Jerusalem. We hinted in the last lesson that Sheen, as a picture or signature of the Lord, was probably not the primary illustration that the Lord had in mind as disclosed in the second letter of the Hebrew word Mishkan. I would like to suggest that the primary meaning of Sheen, the second letter in the Hebrew word Mishkan, is not primarily to identify the one who makes the tabernacle his temporary dwelling place. The fact that the Lord is going to indwell the tabernacle was not a mystery. The letter Sheen, would add no new information about the tabernacle that was not already revealed in the conventional Hebrew text. I would like you to consider that the letter Sheen is about something else, something that most people do not want to talk about, something that makes the world uncomfortable. Sheen is a revelation about blood and death. The letter Sheen is not only the picture of death, Sheen is also a two-letter Hebrew word. So to be clear, the letter Sheen, in addition to being a single letter, is also the word Sheen spelled Sheen Noon. Is it a coincidence that this picture is repeated twice? It cannot go unnoticed that the first and last letters of Mishkan, the word translated in English as tabernacles, when put together, compose the same word Sheen. So to be clear, the word Sheen is spelled Sheen Noon. Sheen, the second letter in the word Mishkan, is followed by the fourth and last letter in the word Mishkan, the letter Noon. In our last lesson, we learned that the same letter Noon, when connected to the first letter of Mishkan, the letter Mem, is also a word. The letter Mem Noon, the first and last letters in Mishkan, compose the Hebrew word Manna. Clearly, the Lord wants us to know that the first and last letters in the Mishkan give us a picture of life, life that comes down from heaven. So we must ask the question, if Mem Noon is about life, then what revelation is contained in the two-letter word Sheen, made up of Sheen Noon? What does the Sheen Noon give us a picture of? Obviously, Sheen, as a picture, is the polar opposite of the picture meaning of manna. Sheen Noon is the picture of the destruction of life. Sheen, teeth, Noon, life. What is this all about? 
The solution to the mystery meaning of the Mishkan is only discovered once you investigate and understand the one remaining letter we have not yet investigated. So let's investigate the third letter in the Hebrew word Mishkan, the letter that unlocks the meaning of the mystery of the tabernacle. Notice that the third letter in the Hebrew word Mishkan that we translate into English as tabernacle is the letter Kav. Notice that just like the single letter Sheen, that is also the two-letter word Sheen, spelled Sheen Noon, the single letter Kav is also a two-letter Hebrew word Kav, spelled Kav Pei. Kav, the word translated into a picture, illustrates Kav, or the palm of the hand, covering the Pei, which is the mouth. Kav literally means to cover the mouth with the hand. What you may not know is that this is an illustration of atonement. The picture we find in the letter Kav is the same picture magnified in the Hebrew word Kippur. Do you know what Kippur means? Have you ever heard of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement? Let me paint the portrait that is revealed in the single picture of Kav. It is a picture of the palm of the hand. Add the detail found in the word Kav, and you now have solved half the mystery of the tabernacle of the Mishkan. It is the hand or palm covering the pay or the mouth. The Hebrew word kippur adds another detail that can also be found in the combination of the other pictures in the Hebrew word Mishkan. What is this detail? Kippur tells us who it is that is covering his mouth, a picture that is not only consistent with the meaning of Mishkan, but essential. Without it, there would be no purpose for the tabernacle. So who is covering his mouth? It is the highest prince, the judge. It is the Lord himself that is covering his mouth. So here is the picture you should now have in your mind when looking at the third letter in the Hebrew word kav, found in the word mishkan or tabernacle. Imagine a criminal standing before the judge having committed and been found guilty of a capital crime worthy of death. The evidence is overwhelming. The criminal is guilty of capital crimes that can only be punished with the death penalty. The criminal rises with his head bowed, quivering, and shaken as he feebly stands with his knees knocking together. The moment of truth has finally arrived, and the criminal is about to receive his just and well-deserved sentence of death. All the charges against the criminal are read out loud. It is clear to everyone, including the criminal, that the charges against him are indisputable. Finally, it comes time for the judge to do his duty and declare judgment on the criminal. The list of complaints is laid down on the judge's bench as the judge rises to pronounce doom on the guilty sinner. But just as the judge is about to speak, he places his hand over his mouth and refuses to say a word. The judge literally refuses to speak or pronounce the sentence of death. Is this the end of the mystery? Is a tabernacle simply a picture of the gracious and merciful dismissal of the death penalty that we all deserve because of our sin and rebellion? The answer is absolutely not. A payment must be made. For over a thousand years, the sacrificial system was a central part of life in Israel, first revealed in the tabernacle and finally in the temple. During that time, countless blood sacrifices were offered to the Lord. Some were sacrifices of the fruit of the harvest, including everything from grapes to grain. But the overriding purpose was the continual blood sacrifices that were made as atonement for sin based on a substitution of the blood of cattle, goats, and sheep in exchange for the blood of man. The temple in Jerusalem replaced the tabernacle in the wilderness. The temple in Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD, and the Jews were dispersed throughout the world without any way to perform temple sacrifices. But the sacrificial system that rehearsed atonement on a daily basis ended with the destruction of the Jewish temple in 70 AD. The purpose of the tabernacle ended approximately 40 years earlier when the Lamb of God was sacrificed on a wooden cross on the 14th of Nisan sometime between 30 and 33 AD. The tabernacle and finally the temple were dress rehearsals for the final once-for-all sacrifice of the Son of God who shed his blood in order that man might be delivered from the curse of God and the bondage of sin. The blood of all the goats and sheep ever created along with all the cattle that was ever born could not satisfy the sin debt of man. Only one sacrifice could atone for the sins of man. We learned that the third letter in Mishkan, the letter Kav, was a picture of the judge putting his hand over his mouth and not pronouncing judgment on the guilty criminal.
In order to truly understand the mystery of the Mishkan, we need to disclose the rest of the story. The final clue is found in the Hebrew word noon. Noon is the last letter and the final picture in the Hebrew word Mishkan or tabernacle. Noon, as we know, is the picture of the fish and it means life. The final missing piece to the mystery of the tabernacle is solved in the picture meaning of the Hebrew word noon. Noon is not just a single letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It's also a word. Noon, as a word, is spelled noon, yod, noon. Life, a mighty divine deed or work and life. Let me repeat that again. Noon, life, yod, a mighty divine deed. Noon, life. Are you beginning to get the picture? Even the most cursory examination of this picture, based on what we've discovered so far, will yield up the mystery meaning of noon. The letter that is pictured as a fish and has the meaning of life. The word noon gives the answer to the meaning of the mishkan or tabernacle. Life, a mighty deed, life. What is the picture? Life cannot exist independent of the divine deed done by the author of life. And who is the author of life? The answer is found in John 1.4 where we read, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Who is the Apostle John talking about? The answer is found in the sixth chapter of John, where we read about the bread of life that came down from heaven and gave his life unto the world. Who is that? It is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. The Hebrew picture embedded in the picture of the Hebrew word noon discloses that there is a life that gives life, and without that life, there is no life. The letter noon, as used in the Hebrew word mishkan, further reveals that there is a life being given in order that a life be saved or redeemed. Can you see in the Hebrew word noon the substitution of a holy, righteous, and spotless life for the life of a criminal? Let's go back and look at Kav, the picture of the judge covering his mouth. Now, if I was to ask you who the judge was, could you tell me? Most Christians believe that the judge is God the Father. Let's discover what the Bible reveals on that subject. I've selected just a couple verses as a citation of this truth. There are many, many more proofs that could be found by doing a simple biblical word search. But listen to what it says in 2 Timothy 4.1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. And John 5.22 makes it perfectly clear. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So let's review. Sheen, the Hebrew word spelled sheen noon, is the word that pictures the devouring or destroying of life. You can see this clearly in the picture of the teeth that devours and destroys noon or life. Look what happens when you put cough between the sheen, pictured as teeth that destroys, and noon, the picture of life. When you look at the last three letters of the Hebrew word mishkan as an illustration, what do you see? You see the picture of the hand, kof, separating the destroyer, sheen, from the life, noon. Only kof, the hand that covers, can stop the destruction of life. The tabernacle was the place where blood sacrifices were made as atonement for the sins of Israel. These blood atonements were never able to atone for the sins of Israel they were simply rehearsals of the one supreme atonement, the only atonement that could cover our sins by virtue of the bloody death of a perfect sacrifice. No mere man could atone for the sins of others, let alone himself. Only God could provide the one and only blood sacrifice that would satisfy his justice and his righteousness. That blood sacrifice was made at a place called Calvary just outside of Jerusalem on a cross that lifted up the Savior of the world. He had a name. His name was Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. The mystery of the tabernacle was revealed and has been revealed in time and space. The thousands and thousands of rehearsals of atoning blood sacrifices ended when the perfect and spotless Lamb of God willingly gave himself as the once-for-all perfect sacrifice sent from heaven to reverse the curse of sin and redeem all those that trusted in his gracious substitutionary atonement, an atonement that cost Yeshua HaMashiach his own precious blood and life. We no longer need a tabernacle or temple to make atonement for our sins. The temporary tabernacle and the temporary temple were established by the Lord 
in order to perform dress rehearsals for the most amazing single event to ever take place in human history. And what was that event? The Son of God came down from heaven and dwelt among us at the time appointed by God the Father in order to make final and once for all atonement for our sins. This atonement reversed the curse of death so that we might have eternal life. Now you know the mystery of the Mishkan, the mystery of the tabernacle. Thank you for taking the time to read or listen to this article. Stay tuned for our next article. Until then, keep looking up, and Shalom. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this Hebrew word study. It is our prayer that you will draw closer to your Heavenly Father as you consider the divine revelation of Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of God. Until next time, Shalom. We hope this study was a blessing to you and encouraged you in your faith. For more Hebrew word study videos, you can visit our site at thelivingword3d.com. And if you'd like to investigate this further, you can get the book from our online bookstore at rockislandbooks.com.